everyone. Episode 699. Whoa. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love a nice (laughs) even number. We're so close. So close to the lucky number seven. Yes. Oh, that is. Oh, but you know what they say? Seven year itch. We've already made it past that, right? <laughs> yeah, at least we we have made it past the seven year yeah mark, good. right? Yeah, so hopefully, are you feeling itchy? No, not at all. Okay, can we? you I can go anywhere. Me. Again, my longest relationship. This is, <laughs> it's gonna be like long uh, longest relationship in my mind. I was like, yeah, I'd, I should be buried next to Susie. Like that, <laughs> we should be in the same like. Which yeah. then made me think. I was just having a conversation with somebody the other day. I can't remember who it was. They were talking about burial practices Mm. in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And they said that they visited some, like they went to a cemetery to like visit a relative or something like that. And... I, 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 she told me this and I was like, I, I feel like I, I didn't, so I did no background research. This Mm -hmm. is just word of mouth. Heard this. They say that like when you, because it's under the sea level, under sea level, below Uh sea level, that's what they call that. They can't bury the bodies in the same way. So they put them in these like sarcophaguses, like tomb things in the, like the walls, but then you can pay to have it maintained for forever but some people don't so you could see some are like brand sparkling spanking new and other ones are just crumbling and then once like it decays enough they just put a new body on top (laughs) in the wall yeah you said and they said it was really stinky because i bet there's something about like not being able to use certain embalming techniques or something I don't know. Were you guys high at the time? Definitely not. But (laughs) I I mean. Just checking. Yeah. Because it sounds like the type of conversation two stoners would have. It totally does sound like that. (laughs) No. I might have been stoned, but my friend was not. It kind of makes sense though, because New Orleans does have a lot of like wacky, like voodoo, spooktastic stuff. You know, you can do like cemetery tours and stuff. Oh, cool. Because they just love like ghosts and weirdness. Yeah, so it feels very haunted. Yeah, Ooh, well, I guess it feels early. extra haunted if everyone's stinking up the joint with their dead rotting corpses. Yeah. So she's like, if you get buried, make sure you pay to have maintenance because they will really do nothing. Okay. Well, yeah. good to know. If you live in the New Orleans area... Please tell us what we got wrong because yeah. I have a oh, sneaking There's so suspicion. much of this. Guaranteed <laughs> so much of this is wrong. <laughs> I kind of love it though. 100%. Like, dead bodies. We're really kicking it off with uh, some what dark shit. What do we know? <laughs> Getting spooky. Uh, um, I do have an update for you from, do you remember? I think it was last episode, maybe a few ago. I said, just blurted out that a piece of the sun broke off. <laughs> No. Remember this? Yeah. I, I blocked it out. And you were like, Sarah, like, what do a you mean? A piece of the sun? And I said, yeah, a piece of the sun broke off. It was either this on this show or things we got wrong. It but might have, I no, was, maybe it was with Jeff. No, definitely here because I remember <laughs> you being like, that's ridiculous. Okay, okay, okay. I'll I'll take your word for it. And it really did happen, but I wanted to be more specific and get, yeah. give you the the actual details. So it's it's... You know, we've been hearing about all these like Arctic like p- vortexes and like, you know, rivers that have been happening in like California with the rain and everything. Yeah. This is something similar in a way that happens on the sun called a polar vortex. And it was material from uh, the northern prominence of the sun just because it's like a big gas blob and everything. But material <laughs> from the sun <laughs> broke off away from the main part of the sun mm-hmm. and then created this circulating powerful polar vortex around the north pole of our star the sun and uh looks crazy on video like you can go to uh like you know google this or go to like nasa's website and they have pictures of it is it above the sun or under the sun it is what pole we talking north or south 
the it's on the what did it say the north pole the north pole it's like a little head up there yeah it just broke off and now it's like circulating around and then it creates this like polar vortex that that I don't know, creates some like atmospheric change in the sun. And, uh, you know, That's it's real wild. far away, so it doesn't really bug us. But it's funny because obviously, when you call it a polar vortex, because of our implications, yep. it sounds like shiver me timbers. Correct. But, it's but they're really just referring to the north and south poles yeah. of something. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what makes it, can you define just like in layman's terms what a vortex is? Because I always thought Absolutely it was like, like, not. No idea. <laughs> I thought that meant like a like almost like a black hole, like a void where things get sucked in or something. But I clearly am wrong. Yeah, it says just basically, <laughs> as this article says, basically a big piece of plasma broke away from the sun's surface and the polar vortex it was swept up in isn't the same as the polar vortex we might expect here on Earth. That oh, okay. is the no, definition that, makes sense, that CBS gave me. CBS no, that News. makes sense because it just said the vortex in which it was sucked up. So... Yeah. Um, it's the plasma, like a, it got sucked into the vortex Ooh. and then just keeps going and swirly, swirly. And hey, cool. I don't know what any, it, there are no real consequences for this to it's us. Just like I, it's just kind of fun and interesting. Yeah, that is. Yeah. It was, Something it that could sun. possibly bring consequences though, is this asteroid that NASA is looking at that's supposed to be coming our direction in like 2047. In our direction. Okay, 20. Like, yeah. 47. Yeah. Headed straight for us. Yes. Okay, how big we talking? I don't know. Well, I mean, I feel like it matters. Yeah, it does. big enough. I mean. <laughs> okay, so what are they saying? Right. Shall I get in the bunker now or what? No, I think we're good. But they, they're, <sighs> when I heard this, I was listening to NPR and they just like talked a little bit about it. And I in, immediately got the mental image of what the hell was that movie armageddon yes yeah. armageddon i'm like i hope that we have come up with some new ideas or since do you we mean sent the old one... bruce willis up there oh, okay because i was making sure you didn't mean the don't look up which no it's also kinda... also terrifying that <laughs> seems more realistic in a way <laughs> right 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 like, okay i don't know what we're gonna do about this so armageddon was about an asteroid Yes, asteroid that, and I still don't even, I know we've looked this up on here before, the difference between an asteroid and a comet and like all that. I think it has something to do with a meteor. I think it's like once it crosses into the earth, it becomes a meteor. And then like, I don't know what the fuck, but yeah, this is a big old asteroid. What did they do in the movie? Oh, they go up to the asteroid. They send, they're like on a one way trip. Right. Like it's, okay. (laughs) Suicide mission. Yeah. Ben Affleck. Yes, Ben Affleck, Bruce Willis, and uh, uh, Liv Tyler's real sad on Earth. But don't worry, she's got a great song that her dad sings <laughs> right, to keep right. her company. Uh huh. Yeah, I thought and he was with they them, go maybe. up and then they drill into the asteroid. And oh, oh, you got. I have to say, they they get the team of uh, the 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 what do they call like the ragtag team they got going up there. Yeah. They they wanted people who were really good at drilling because they got it. This is a big drilling mission, so they took people from an oil <laughs> Who's rig. Who's bad at drilling? Wow, <laughs> you know I mean, what I mean? I, like, I gotta I... imagine some people are experts. If you told me what to do after you got like, I, I, you give me a little <laughs> shovel. I, I go about four feet deep, and I don't know what to do once I hit. Rock. Okay. These okay. these guys maybe knew what tools to use mm-hmm. uh, more than just righty tighty lefty loosey. <laughs> <laughs> right, to, there's a little, little bit more to it. Something, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, but weren't you telling a story just last week about the guys who dug holes? For, yeah. Like, okay. Yes, so, I yeah, was. Yeah, probably anybody could do this with the right. Thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they send them up there, and then does it work? That's what I'm wondering. Because did they just die and we're supposed to be happy about it? Yeah. I mean, Liv Tyler isn't. Well, no. I, I don't remember how that ended. I feel like that's kind of the whole point. Like, big finale, and I don't remember any of it. They had to have survived. They had to have. Not, they didn't survive. They're dead. One way. You know but that for sure? People, Yes. People on Earth, I oh. wonder if, I think. Yeah, I'm sure there was a successful mission. Yeah. 
Why would you make a whole movie about it if it was like everybody's dead? <laughs> right. That's a downer. Yeah. Who needs that yeah. in our life? I'll tell you what I do need in my life. And that is Lumi deodorant. The best. <laughs> She's smelling the, good. The but, and my favorite is when people don't know just how well it works. Yeah. And then they try and they're like, oh my God, that really did cut out all the smell. I am a uh, toasted coconut scent kind of gal. Sarah's more of the lavender sage group, but they have awesome scents. They even have unscented as well. This is whole body deodorant. So whatever part of your body is stinking up the joint, Lumi can help. And I don't know if you've ever smelled a 10-year-old boy's feet. I don't recommend it. Um, And thankfully, Lumi is perfect for every member of my family now. And they have a deal for our listeners as a special offer for our listeners. New customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code BRAINCANDY at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code BRAINCANDY. This stuff is awesome. It's exactly what you want and nothing of what you don't want. Right. Lincoln uses it. Great, as Sarah taught me, for feet and other body parts. You can put this head to toe. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. We know about your stinky balls. Oh, yeah. I always forget about that. Just get those wipes. And do a little wipey wipe. Yeah, they have wipes. No problem. No this problem. Camping, if you are a camper, just get the wipes. You'll thank me later. And so will everybody else on your hike. Well, and I've heard they're great for traveling, the wipes. So yeah, keep great. those babies in your bag, near or far, and you'll be glad you did. Yes. Okay. Sorry I interrupted you. Uh, to update you, you know, it because you asked about the size of that crater. Or the, yes, the, did. the asteroid meteor, a- asteroid, whatever the heck it is. Uh, it is estimated to be 49 meters, about 160 feet long, or roughly the size of an Olympic sized swimming pool. Right. Which I bet some people would think, well, that's not too big. Maybe it'll just hit freaking, um, you know, Paris or something. Yeah. But maybe it'll just- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when we read about the dinosaur one. Oh. It was not that big either, but Mm -hmm. look what happened to those guys. They are in the New Orleans cemetery as we speak. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they did, that didn't end well for them. Speaking of extinct things, did you see about these scientists wanting to bring back the woolly mammoth and the dodo? Uh, Did they feel they were unfairly extincted? Could you imagine? (laughs) I just feel like this is one of those Jurassic Park know. things. Just because we oh, can yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. mean we should. And like unintended consequences. What Wonder if there's what... some weird parasite? I didn't know <laughs> that. I don't know. Or like germs. Yeah. In my mind, when you like freeze germs or when you, when like bacteria and stuff like that. And it, then it becomes I, latent. Is that what you're I saying? didn't know that. I thought it was like bacteria go bye bye. We just froze it, kills it. Nope. That you can like melt this stuff down. Like, yeah. you know, pe- freaking glaciers are melting and then we're releasing like strains of bacteria that we haven't seen in hundreds of years. Thousands of hundreds, thousands, maybe millions. Forget it. That seems I think like- you're, I, th- I get what you're saying. There probably is a temperature at which it would be cold enough to kill stuff. Yeah. For various things, but I bet you maybe different kinds of bacteria. Because didn't you hear about them? Like, oh, you could put your genes into the freezer and not wash them. Oh, I thought you meant like my genetic, my genetic genes. No, no, my yeah. Remember that? Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, so what is real? (laughs) Sarah, that's a great question because people were real confident about that genes in the freezer thing. They, I, I feel like we were all punked. Yeah. Because just, everything have bacteria on it. We need to like just chill. Uh-huh. Right. So you're saying a lot of the bacteria or whatever, germs, mm-hmm. th- when they are thawed out, come back to life. It's like those yeah. toads that like freeze for the winter and then they're hippity yeah. hopping in spring. Yeah. I was, I was, 
I, I, I didn't want to bring this up here because <laughs> I didn't want to shoe shame you or shoes in the house shame you. Oh, I know. But so I bad. watched a video on, I don't know, something online, probably TikTok or somewhere, where this scientist was exploring like what is actually on our floors. Mm-hmm. And she talked about how germs and dust, things like that, they can, yeah, like you said, dehydrate and then rehydrate. And so we think even after you clean, and she's like, even the cleanest people. Yeah. They think that they're clean, but you swab those floors (laughs) and it's like all the fecal matter you've ever imagined on there. No, I feel like this bolsters my opinion, which is not that I'm clean or that my shoes are and it's no big whoop. It's the opposite. It's that even if we take our shoes off, the whole world is fecal matter. Okay. Just like how I say the whole world is covered in boogers. Exactly. Okay. Boogers and, and poo. It feels like, um, the, the it's theater. It's theater of cleanliness. It's not, you're not actually having a cleaner house. You just no. feel like oh, you are. I see. Yeah. So everything's gross. Everything's gross. And I'm just like, I guess I'm just more fine with it than most people. And you're a very clean person. Yeah. But in terms of germs, I just think you're delusional if you think yeah. all those chloride, Clorox wipes or whatever are solving all the problems. No, they're making it worse. That's for sure. That's for sure. We know that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's complicated. I almost murdered Eli the other day. <laughs> because what, what, what happened? Uh-huh. I... <laughs> We were cleaning okay. the house, you know, I'm like moving everything in. Mm. He is, so, I should say first, he's such a clean person. He is, he's very tidy. He's organized. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I looked up mm-hmm. at our ceiling fan because I was in a cleaning mood, you know, how you could do. So I, he has very, very, very high ceilings in his bedroom. I looked at the ceiling fan because, you know, you look at the house different. When you live there versus when you're just like spending the night a whole bunch. Now I live there. Now it's my house, our house. And I just about flipped my lid. I was like, when was the last time you cleaned that? Never. Yeah. It was. How did he take this judgment? I mean. Was it a thing? He was sensitive. No, he to was it. good about. It. No, he was. He was good. At, he was just like, look, <laughs> we all make mistakes. Oh my God. Like, you know, he, always... he was very. Oh, okay. And then I think what I got more upset with him about was how he, you know, because it's above our bed. Like, you have to cover it. You can't just go. Cl- what if he turned it on? Just go clean it. That he thought he was being a real funny guy. And he's like, Well, you know how I've cleaned it the past oh, five no. years? I just turned the fan on high. I'm like, Centrifugal that is not force. Even a funny joke to make right now. And so he, was, he, was, he was making jokes. And, you know uh, what, though? You can't it. even be mad because, in my experience, and hashtag not all men, you know what I mean? But in my experience, you know how Adam has stovetop blindness where like he'll clean the whole kitchen and it'll be spotless. Now oh. look at the stovetop and I'm like, um, I think you forgot a part. Oh. And so maybe Eli has ceiling fan, fan blindness, you know? hundred percent blind. Mm-hmm. Like they can't did, see it. It's just, they can't, don't have the ability. And, and I, you know, I also was like, okay, maybe not all his fault because he does pay somebody to clean the house. So it feels like if you're paying that, that is covered in like cleaning the house stuff, right? No way. That is not, mm -mm. especially because it's high, high up. Yeah. We had to get a chair and do a a ladder, do a whole balancing act on the bed. (laughs) That's why they're not doing it either. Yeah. And he was like, do you want me to do it? I'm like, nope, I will be doing this. Thank you very much. (laughs) 
And because I'm like super allergic to death to dust mites. Oh, and don't think he didn't take a picture of me as I was doing this. I had my sweatshirt like cinched up. So only my eyeballs, you know, like the hoodie, like over my head. And then I cinched it up so you could just see my eyeballs. <laughs> and then I had the brain candy buff, you know, like our, yeah. our face mask thing. I had that over. So like covering my nose. So all you could see were my eyes. And I'm like, putting my hands in just I don't want dust anywhere touching me but I refuse to let him clean it I'm a crazy <laughs> person so. well if it were normal height you could do the old you know pillowcase method you know where you like what no what like you can put a pillowcase on your arm kind of and then you go like <gasps> this and then you like it captures okay. all the it's great this but it, is you can't do it because it's too high ladies and gentlemen I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Brain Candy Podcast, <laughs> where you will hear wonderful stories such as a eh, penis story, a poo story every now and then, but also life-changing hacks. hacks. <laughs> I like this pillowcase and the fan. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, and you wouldn't think I would care since I'm like tracking in BM all over my shoes, but I do clean my ceiling fan. So that's what I'm saying. You're a very clean person. So that's why it's not as gross, I guess, in your house. <laughs> I guess, yeah. but you know, what else? I, I, uh, I have to tell you a story before I let you carry on. And that is anybody that, have you like been ever had a cat? Yes. I had many cats. Remember all named Sam. They all died. <laughs> I forgot. They all were named Sam. Okay, well, they would have loved this story, but um cats so there's always this predicament, right? Dry food is so much easier, doesn't smell, and all that. But they don't really love it. Right? Oh, what? So you kinda like if you love your cats, you kinda wish that you want to give them the wet food, but then you're opening yourself up for a lifetime of smell. And nastiness. Yeah. Well, and just like the the move of like to get it out of the can. All of it <sighs> is really unpleasant. Well, I, the solution has arrived, and it is in the form of Smalls. And Smalls is working with us because basically, I was like, "Can we please work with Smalls? Because this cat food is the best thing that ever happened to me." And it is basically like human grade. Nice. Food. So yeah. my cats like ca are stoked out of their minds, but no smell. This is very good. I don't know how it's possible. I should tell oh. Matt Neroni because we're always this, talking about uh, this episode sponsored by stuff that doesn't smell. <laughs> right. Not unlike the bear hibernation poo that we learned about. It miraculously right. also doesn't Wait, smell. Uh, a nice, pleasant scent. But okay. Here's some statistics. After making a switch to small, 78% of cat owners reported their cats had shinier and softer fur, and 90% reported health improvements. It's a big deal. Wow. That's a lot. That's everybody. It's everybody. Except, you know how there's always like one dummy yeah, who like who's just... like annoying. Right. <laughs> anyway, I cannot recommend it enough. If you're a cat owner, just thank me later. Um, yeah. You can open it up and not be nauseous. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Um, let me see. Here's the deal. Remember, higher quality ingredients mean healthier and happier life for your kitty. So head to smalls.com slash brain candy and use promo code brain candy at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. It's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our code brain candy for 50% off your first order. One last time, wow. promo code brain candy for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. I really love it. I'm so excited for these cats. It's this ridiculous. Is, so you know how m maybe you have a car and the car is like starting to give you some issues, but you still own the car. <laughs> so you start shopping for other cars and you're like looking around and you're on, you know, all the car websites. <laughs> this is Eli with cats. <laughs> and in Why? case you're Tell wondering, me. Bo's the old jalopy. <laughs> He's ready for a meow meow. Oh yeah. And he was no joke. Looking at different kinds of cats. The other yeah. day, I, like, took, I took Bo to the vet. You know, she gets di update on Bo. She gets diagnosed with dementia. She's got doggy dementia, doggy and dementia. so that is what's going on. Besides that, totally healthy. Well, Just, and the tumor, Sarah. Oh, oh, oh right. <laughs> You keep and doing she, this. I know I keep doing that because it's like the doctor really was like, there's nothing we could do for the, it, it's not, it's just, 
is what it is. We're not, yeah. op- she can't be operated on. She can't, there's, she doesn't respond well to antibiotics or, or anything. If she, anything were to happen, bad news. So tumor is just there and growing and you can see it on her oh. back. And it's like, I know okay. it's big. It's like the size of a, a grapefruit. That's it's, disturbing. Yeah. So that is going on, but she also got diagnosed with the dog point is what so that, that, Sarah's trying to say is like, this dog is, you know, on borrowed time, let's face it. On borrowed time. Yes, and she is, she is. I mean, she's really hanging in there, but mm-hmm. Eli's already thinking about his new car. A hundred percent. He's like, look at this cat's eyes. He's like showing me. I'm like, she's not even dead yet. She's still I warm. Know, I didn't even know Eli was a cat guy. Oh yeah. He's Aww. totally a cat guy. Yeah. I can't wait for this to happen. I know. We've already named it. Do you want to tell me? Yeah, Mango. Oh, oh, that's right. I remember this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have- think. I mean, but we'll get two because you can't just have one like you did. <laughs> yeah. 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 I support yeah. that. We'll get like a cute one that's his style and then a black cat for me. Yeah. It's witchy. And then I'll name it a person name. Or Wednesday. Really funny. You can or like Wednesday. Yeah. It'd be cute. Or like Eleanor after my grandma. Oh my gosh. I don't know. This is so funny because so I, I never well. thought you were going to get a cat. This is great. I'm really happy. Oh, I can see. And my, if you I do, see, get smalls. Small. Am I right, people? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. What else do I have to tell you of exciting stories? Uh, <laughs> this is really funny. It's It's another story about things that are, well... It's kind of like the comet, maybe a little bit. Things, big masses that are headed towards something. Um, okay. Did you read about the giant, and I mean fucking giant, mass of seaweed, which has the funniest name ever. If you're wondering what a giant mass of seaweed floating in the ocean is technically called, it's called a sargasm. Shut up. Yeah, for real. I mean, that's Don't a real have a sargasm of, over it. What? <laughs> it's a real bait and switch because it sounds like real it's going to be fun. Switch. Yeah. If somebody <laughs> was like, just, hey, we're having a sargasm tonight. You'd be like, I'm so happy for you. Or a sargasm is headed here. You'd think fun. But yeah. this is not fun times. This is a basically huge loose raft of <laughs> algae and like seaweed. That How is big are we talking though? Ready for this? Twice no. the width of the United States. Yep. I don't like it this is, story. No, it is set to hit Florida like this week. Oh, I did I did see this, but I didn't know it was twice the size of the United States. Yep. Twice the size. Headed straight for the beaches that I'm headed to next week. Well, what are you going to do? I'm not go in the ocean. You think you're going to see it? I 100% think so. How can you miss it? It's twice the size of the United States. Well, I'd be fucking blind. It just, it can't be true. Uh, it It's already floating around. It's at the Caribbean. It's already passed. Listen, through I'll the say Caribbean. it. Bef- I've said it before and I'll say it again. Disney is full of shit. It is not a small world after all. It is a huge world. If you can have seaweed yes. double the size of the United States. Yes. And it'd be, maybe we will see it. Maybe we won't. Oh, no. We're seeing it. It's going to hit. You can see it from space. Wow. Yeah. It's hitting the coast. 100% sure. Bucket loads are washing up on the beaches of eastern coast of Florida earlier this year than usual. And it's But why is it only bucket loads if it's twice the size of the United States? I think that was the incorrect term for them to use. I think they should have said, like... State massive, loads. massive swarms of algae <laughs> are heading your way. But maybe they didn't want to, like, I don't know, ruin Florida's tourism industry. Yeah. Industry. Well, that's gross. What are we going to do about it? And why is it all lumped together? I, what do you mean, current, nothing? I don't know. It's just going to come ashore and nobody's going to rake it up or something? <sighs> Ugh. Right. I mean, what do you do with it? Well, this seems like something where we should be using this for something. Yeah, it does. Isn't it chock full of like good shit, like algae? Like, it right? seems like it. Plankton would... got good chlorophyll or something like that. <laughs> I feel like we should be like 
turning this into some food for somebody. Yeah, it can't just be all bad news. Right. I mean, it's not. Manatees, they're probably thrilled. Why, they eat it? Maybe. I don't know. Seems like (laughs) it. I don't know anything about. (laughs) That's so gross, though. I saw a funny uh, tweet the other day that said, how do you think Ariel decides whether the sea creatures are her friends or her bra? (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) And good question. And if you're wondering, she wears sea cups. <laughs> Good one. I just threw that in last to myself. Uh, okay, what else do we have to talk about today? <clears throat> um, I read a fun article. It, well, it's kind of fun. We'll see. I read the art, an article in The Atlantic uh, about nostalgia. Did you see this? I thought we already talked about that. So maybe uh, I did just read it. You know what I mean? Like maybe um, I read it also. Is it older? Older one? No, I think it's it's pretty recent. Oh. That's about kind of what it help how it helps unhappy. Oh yeah, I did read it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I liked. I I thought it was interesting that they talked about. Well, first of all, like we've talked about nostalgia on here before, but as like a little refresh, nostalgia is the social emotion that they say researchers say is bittersweet but predominantly positive. And it develops out of happy memories mixed with a yearning for the past and the close relationships we had back then. And a lot of times it is um, kind of linked to like sensory stimuli. So we are we get it especially Smell. from like music and smells and, um, you know, maybe like... Tastes? Taste, duh, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like what it does for us, I think is what they, they're learning more about how it has this protective ability to, we think sometimes like, Oh, nostalgia just makes us feel better, but it really has this defense response to unhappiness. It gives us this relief whenever we're in a negative mood. And I think it's so interesting that the more we have this, I don't know, like collective experience of this whole world is so fucked up and there's so much like shit that we like, I mean, pandemic, quarantine, lockdown, like everything that we're just uh, freaking sargasms, comets, (laughs) sargasms, all this stuff. Yeah. It leaves us with this maybe need to create more of a defense system against unhappiness. Oh, okay. And I think that is why we are seeing so many reboots and so many, like, everybody's thirsty for the past. Okay. Because I was going to say, what was that defense mechanism? I didn't, it wasn't immediately apparent to me what the evolutionary benefit would be of um, having the past be looked upon in that rosy way. But if you're saying it, it, it wards off depression, then that's Mm -hmm. beneficial. And it research shows that when people feel nostalgia, it bolsters their sense of life's meaning. It lowers an existential reaction to the idea of death, increases spirituality and raises optimism. Yeah. I believe all that. That makes sense. Yeah, and it, and you even though it's often associated with negative emotions, it doesn't cause them. It creates a defense response to ones that we would have in the future. What does and that mean? Social bonds. Defense. What do you mean, defense response? Like about? it creates a a boost of our mood that then mm. carries on, and so like if we have say. I don't know, you just smell the warm vanilla cookies that remind you of your grandma. You are less likely, it, it, you're less likely to experience negative, Yeah. F- that feeling of unhappiness. In that moment and in the future. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the article, what I also wanted to share in the article was it sh- talked about how to increase this and how to kind of stimulate nostalgia on our own. 
Because, like, you know, it's one thing if you have a reboot, but maybe you already watched all the episodes of Fuller House and you need something more. (laughs) So you can look for ways to trigger nostalgia or to increase the, um, increase how often you feel it, which like, who doesn't love? Okay. So, uh, three steps, three different tricks. Number one, find a shortcut to your happy place. This I do with clients all the time. We work on like finding a happy place, finding it's kind of like a safe space exercise. You can close your eyes and really think about the different sensory experience of that place. You know, if it's uh, Disneyland, what does it smell like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? What's the temperature on your skin? And really like creating that safe space so it, I don't know, intensifies the emotions. And the more you go there, you know, we talk about how like memories change the more you access them. The more you go there, the easier it is to get there mm-hmm. and to kind of stimulate that and, and create those feelings that ward off. Do you think people have trouble getting there though? Because, yeah. oh, wow. I feel like I live there. What's your happy place? Oh my God. It's not even, it's not even my happy place, but I feel nostalgic constantly because the older I get, the more I'm like, wow, I peaked. I am d- n- on the downswing. And so I'm always longing for another time, a different time. Do you feel life. like the things that ha- – the ways that that nostalgia has have been triggered or is triggered has changed as you've aged? I don't know. I notice it more frequently, but that's just because – of course, you have more experiences to draw upon. So in the article, it said that younger people felt more nostalgia for pets, toys, and holidays, and older people felt more strongly for music. Hmm. What do you think that's about? Right. Maybe it's like that, Louisa, like you get more distance from those memories of like a toy. That's interesting. Yeah. And then I was thinking maybe it's the it's just that so you, that's all they I mean, know is like fucking yeah. toys and shit. Yeah, See, I'm nostalgic for whatever age those bozos are at. The ones I'm like nostalgic toys. for when I was nostalgic for toys. Oh, yeah. So I, I was gonna. <laughs> there are a few want, like nostalgic questions I want to ask you. What was the age you were most nostalgic for? Oh, you I didn't mean, even finish the three things, did I? Look oh, at my ADD ass. Well, let, me, the three let things, me interrupt Sarah. you and say what I am not nostalgic for is when the lady messed up my hair and made half of it <gasps> fall out. Mm-hmm. But I am thankful for Nutrafol, which is mm-hmm. the solution to my problem. Because Nutrafol Absolutely. is what I take every day to stimulate growth and to facilitate getting that hair all back. I know a lot of people have thinning from hormones, COVID, life experience, whatever, or a bad stylist and know what it feels like and it stinks. And um, if you want to try being a little proactive, I think Nutrafol is a great option. And in a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. It's a long haul, man. You got to get in there, get going and stick with it. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code BRAINCANDY to save $10 off your first month subscription. This offer is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time, plus free shipping on every order. Get $10 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code BRAINCANDY. Yes. I love it. Trust Every me. time I talk to a friend about it, they say, oh, yeah, my doctor told me to use that. Yes, like legit. A lot of, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's great for that, like, postnatal hair loss, like that. For real. And that Mm -hmm. didn't happen to me when I had a child, but that does happen to a lot of people. And it's so scary because during your pregnancy, you get like this thick, awesome mane. And then it's like, bye bye. Oh, (laughs) that is traumatizing. It is. You know? Yeah. I'll never forget that. I thought you were so calm when that happened. I don't yeah. know how. I it was, was a slow burn. Freaked out. Okay. Back to our list. Yes. 
Um, so we talked about finding that shortcut, creating that shortcut. Uh, number two, anticipate your memories. So starting, yeah. like, this is one, this is kind of in the same, uh, I don't know, category. It's like the same kind of solution as like, be grateful. Yeah, it is. And like, be present and in the moment. So you have to have an awareness of yourself in that moment. So almost like bird's eye view, you're watching yourself. I think we talked about this a little bit ago, whereas like the, there's the act that things that are actually taking place. Then there's the, our awareness of what's taking place. And then there's like the story that we write about what's taking place. Mm -hmm. We have to have an awareness and be like, wow, look at me in this moment. And we have to think to ourselves. It helps. They said in this article to think to yourself, man, these are the good old days and actually like use that phrase and imagine yourself in the future, thinking back to this moment right here, kind of saying, ah, these are the good old days. Yeah. And it has to be so intentional. And then Mm -hmm. we can boost the way that we will feel about that moment. And we'll remember that moment unless you make the effort to remember it. And all those different like five senses thing. It's that quote from that movie, Don't Look Up, I always reference because it struck my soul when at the end and they're all going to die and it's like the worst. And he goes, we really did have it all, didn't we? Meaning, and we didn't even appreciate it. And that's yeah. just everybody. That's, I mean, human nature. Yeah. You want what really. you don't have. So you're never, you very rarely reach like contentment. Oh, man. It's such a bummer because then it makes it a daily practice of like, nope, I have to be thankful. It's a daily thing. I yeah. think of you every single time I, that life is so daily. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's hard to accept because. I can't believe I have to do laundry again or whatever it is, you know, it's like this again, I just did this. And you kind of have to switch it to the, I can't believe I have to do laundry. Like get, get to do laundry. It's so lucky I have clothes. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We're so bad at that. I, I am really struggling with that as, you know, I, I, my ex-husband like got married and now is having a kid and it feels like, am I missing out on something? And I had to stop myself at the moment and be like, your life is great. Mm -hmm. You have wonderful friends. You have an amazing partner who has, you know, given you a wonderful family that like you feel connected to and you feel safe and you love where you live and you're close to your brother, like blah, 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 blah. But it's so easy when we do that comparison to like, well, I want that or like, Mm -hmm. we forget. Oh, trust me. When that baby comes out and you're on the powder and he's up all night. Uh Uh-huh. You're right. Trust me. He's (laughs) going to be envious. Maybe not him, but like, you know, theoretically, yeah. people who have a new baby really wish they could go skiing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I really wish you could go just, you know, camp in the middle of nowhere. I mean, maybe not him, but yeah, that's really funny. But that problem happens to me all the time where I'll think back to a time where mm-hmm. I wasn't happy for one reason or another, and I would kill for those problems now. Yeah. And, and it's really hard though, to, um, future proof that and to think, well, maybe in the future things will be even worse and I'll be uh, nostalgic for this moment. I'm like, yeah, but switch that. That's like what there's like, we can't think, Oh, but it is, that is essentially what you're saying. hundred (laughs) percent. But we can't say that. (laughs) That's not part of the list, Susie. I'm just saying what's, Behind it, you know, like the uh, subtext there is the reason yes. that you'll be nostalgic is because things are about to get even shitty, shittier. What? I we're like the, the moment... opposite of inspirational, right? No, is. it's real. It's we're like realistic, but but <laughs> sorry, and and it's in your control. <laughs> That's the good thing. Yeah, is that you know 
you you get to control and nobody else does like you control how i just heard this thing and it, oh i watched the most beautiful movie the boy the mole the ho- fox and the horse i'm probably saying that totally in the wrong order i don't know it it won an academy award for best uh uh Short. animated short film. Mm-hmm. It is full of the most beautiful messages. And like, I bawled my eyes out the whole entire time. I was like, yes, give them all the awards. This is so good. It was so beautiful. And the artwork is so amazing. And in it, they say, we are all gifted the freedom of how we respond. And I was right. Like, oh, that's good. Yeah. That we all have the freedom to respond and in, in I'm pissed off about this or I'm yep. going to think that this is the good times. and, and This was blah, blah, framed blah. in my mother's house, this uh, quote. I'm sure of like most Christians know it. It's from this guy named Charles Swindoll, who's like a famous Christian dude. And it was, it's basically life is 90%, uh, eight, 10% what happens to you, 90% how you respond to it, you know, yeah. that old chestnut. And yeah. it's not, I'm not annoyed with it because it's false. I'm annoyed with it because it's true. So true. <laughs> and we really, and then when like, it puts the ball in our court, like then we're, it's our fault if we're not having a good time because we're in control of that 90% and it's so much easier to blame somebody else. Well, here's the caveat is that a lot of the people that peddle these tonics Uh are telling you personally as an individual that your attitude is up to you and they're not wrong about that. But what they're concealing is that the people that benefit most from that uh, sort of like, no, my, I'm going to keep my attitude positive mm-hmm. are the people that are rigging the system, the systemic yeah. inequality, yeah. racism, mm-hmm. sexism, classism, all of the stuff that benefits rich, white, straight, cis men, yeah. um, is only possible if you continue to think, no, I'm going to do better. I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps. I'm going to keep a good attitude. Because then you think it's an individual problem for a systemic, a solution to a systemic problem. So like, let's keep some balance there. That is a very good point. That there is. So, yeah. Keep a good attitude while that you That 10% also- can be very, very <laughs> impactful. And yes, absolutely. Yeah. So um, just something. Yeah, this is an important point. Something to, to add. Yeah. And the last thing on this list to help trigger nostalgia or create it is to build tradition and to do things. And it only takes two times really to build a tradition, to do something, you know, and you repeat it, you meet up in the same place again, you say you're going to do something and, and create a tradition to do it. Mm -hmm. And it just tells the brain that this is special. And this is like a moment to almost like a marker, like a life marker. We can Mm -hmm. remember things that we've created traditions around better than we can other things. Yeah, that's true. I don't have many traditions. My family. Well, that's because yeah. you don't have many family. <laughs> Let's be honest. I here. had a little bit of a breakdown when Eli was like trying to be nice. I often have breakdowns for things like this, and he, he'll be like, "Just a small meltdown." He calls him. I'm like, "You're so kind." It was a full blown breakdown. Um, whenever you know, it was like Christmas time around that. He's like, "You know, I want to make sure we're celebrating. You know, doing some Christmas stuff. Like, what are your family's traditions?" Like, we don't have any. <laughs> Lay off me. I'm starving. Lay off me. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't I was have totally any. like that. So I need to like create some traditions. I mean. Your, your family had unusual, you know, celebrations, it feels like. It was more like um, pagan rituals. <laughs> right. Which came with a lot. Of, you'd think there'd be a lot of tradition around that kind of stuff. But it was more like inconsistency. There's no... Hey, what about the turn down day? One. Oh, turn down day. That's right. Turn Seriously? down day. Yeah. That was it. 
when yeah. you want to play hooky from school. That was the best. They called it a turn down day. Yeah. Turned. And then when I went was over at Susie's house, we listened to that song on the radio and I was like, What this is a real song? <laughs> I didn't even know. Either Sally made thought, it up. Yeah, it was like something that just people sang. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you know, you have that's what I'm saying though, is that your family had them. It's just on un- like different kinds. Yeah. I think skipping school and visiting <laughs> Graves and felonies stuff like that. and totally <laughs> just a hundred percent. Like uh, I remember one year we went on a family road trip to the Southwest, and it was like my mom and my three brothers, or two brothers, three of us, three kids, and it, this tourist sites that we stopped at were different cemeteries, and we took a rock from the tombs that like some grave site that we like felt connected to which also mm, kind of feels creepy see there. pagan rituals and, i'm telling yeah. you and then we like took it back to the house that we made a rock garden in our backyard with all of them sarah <laughs> so you have traditions they are just fucked oh, up crazy. <laughs> yeah. around, crazy. around death yeah and and can you call like all getting together to like smoke a joint before thanksgiving dinner could that be a tradition <laughs> Because we did that too. Yeah. So you have them. Until my brother stopped smoking weed and got all boring. But he got soaps or what? Yeah. Well, I, I think just like J- Lucas can't do it because of his work. And, you know, they kind of frown upon firefighters driving engines. You can't do and- it when you're off, you mean? <laughs> no, because it stays in your system. You, you, and if you were to like get in an accident or something like that and they tested you for whatever it would come up positive even if you weren't high yeah. they need a better testing system for that's, weed because they need something to say you i guarantee just you they it have it like, i guarantee you they have it but like, they like yeah what is up with that i'm telling you there's this weirdness this stigmatized shit about pot that makes no sense yeah i have to go i have to like quit for like two weeks because i got to go in and get another test done my my uh new doctor was like oh you know, we want to see lower levels now that you've started your medication. That's Stop dumb. it. Because cause they – why? I know. Especially in a state where it's legal. I don't understand how I could drink all the fuck I want. Or they which, won't continue giving you your prescription? I don't know. I almost feel like I want to say, I don't want to take this test again. I don't have to. You don't – that's not related. Yeah. I, that's I have a full real weird. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, then it goes on your met, your record for forever. I already have it on there once. I don't want that, like, you know. Yeah. How long does it take to get out of there? Like two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, it doesn't even need to be clean. It just was, like, lower, lower levels. But I think I had, like, it was, like, Super Bowl the weekend before, the day before I went last time. And I was definitely smoking then. Munchies like crazy. And, uh, yeah, it came up real high. <laughs> so, you know. God. Keep uh, us posted on this journey. Yeah. You know how everything's uh, a journey to influencers? Why do they say that shit? I know. Everything's like, a journey and everything's amazing. Yeah, why? Oh my god, this is amazing. I am is, obsessed. I did the same thing. I'm the I like. Um, so I was going through my notes here of things that I want to talk about. And I sometimes I just write things down and I yeah. don't know what it means. Yeah, what does but, it say? So this says do you like mu- house music but also have back problems? <laughs> this concert's for you. No, and you don't know the answer? I It took me a minute because I, I read and I was like, what was this? But now I remember Eli and I went and saw a show that, by this band called Big Gigantic that played with the Denver Orchestra. And so we saw it at like, a, it, you know, it's like a whole classical orchestra and like really fun, like dancey house music. It was the crowd. Listen, I love a concert where you can sit. It was in like a concert hall, you know. It was definitely like a moment where I felt old. Where I was Why? like, wow. Okay. So, you know, when you were little, maybe other people can can understand this. So I felt like when I was younger, like 12, little kid. My mom would listen to music, like cool music, like instrumental music, like stuff. And I'd be like, ah, turn this off. This is old people music. I am fully in that old people music. Like, You mean you prefer music with no lyrics? It's not even that. It's like, 
a different style of music. It's like not, I don't know, pop music. It's more alternative and like uh, international and and like the music they'd feature on NPR and like this new new band's like new agey in a way. And it felt like everybody else. Yeah, but why is nobody singing on it? No, there were people singing on. Oh, okay, on this. they're vocals. Yeah, yeah. But yeah they're, they're not vocals. Words? They had like guest vocals come out, and no, they said words. words. Yes. Oh, okay. There's lyrics. Yeah, lyrics, like regular, like music, oh. but just like a style. Maybe it's different because I would imagine your mom was just listening to like Christian music. At best. Yeah. She says she doesn't really like music, which, you know. And you don't even sociopath. fall into this category because you love the old stuff so much that you were probably listening to all that stuff back then anyway. Yeah, but I'm just trying to figure out what genre this is. The one that I went to or the one that yeah. I listened to? And uh, I would put it in like adult alternative, but not even alternative music, more like like festival kind of like hippie. But imagine if the festival hippie goers are now, they've grown up. And now they don't want to go to the festivals anymore because that's for young people. And they don't want to do drugs or anything like that because they have work the next day. And they probably, like, have a sitter, so they have to be home by 9.30 or 10. That's what this was. This was, like, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock in a concert hall. Like, good seating. Didn't have to wait in line and, like, fight a bunch of people at the bar. Or it, it was, like, a, a elevated music going experience that if I were 18 to 25, I would have been like, this is boring and this is dumb. And now I'm like, this is the only way I want to see music. This is fantastic. Yeah. What did you like about it? You just felt peaceful or what? I felt peaceful. It felt like not a lot of like the craziness that when you go to, con- I, I don't want, it's like people everywhere and it's all, people are pushing and it's too loud people and, push. you know, they're like, <laughs> It's too much. Yeah, you're right. Because since I like old old music, like oldies, nobody's pushing at the concerts nobody's, I go to. Right. No. Nobody's yeah. like fighting to get to the front and like but when we no. were at There's like, assigned one of these seats. festivals. Yes. That's yeah. what I'm looking. I want assigned seats. Yeah. I want like Yeah, no Sarah. Funny business. No this, funny I'm, business. It was a lovely music going experience that I know if it, if I had gone even five years ago, I would have been like boring. Wow. Like let's go it's Saturday night. Let's go out. I was like, I think I'm, I'm, I'm looking around and I'm like, yeah, these are the people who these are your people. like used to go to the festivals. And now I'm like, I got shit to do tomorrow. I got to be home and I got to <laughs> relieve the babysitter by nine thirty. So we got to look at this and no encore, no, just like little encore, but only like, and once they're done, they're done. Nobody like, there's no games. I hate no the silliness. encore games. Yeah. None of that. Of like, No, yeah. no, no, no. It was Stop great. It. So that's why I, now I remember well, welcome. why I wrote down. Welcome yeah. to, it's happy, I'm happy to be here. The world where you have a, a normal bedtime. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah. And everything is reasonable. I there love, is no pushing. Re, I love it. That <laughs> is that is exactly my jam now. So that's why I'm gonna have to really prepare for Beyonce concert because oh, yes. I think it's so funny how there was like a like a tweet or something about how like if you got Beyonce tickets, you should have had to take a quiz first <laughs> to like make sure that you're worthy, which I totally would have failed. Yeah, because. Um, I, I hope, I want to clarify, I wasn't saying Halo was my favorite Beyonce song. I was just saying the vocals were really good. Yeah, people really got worked up about that. It's not my favorite Beyonce song. It's, it's She sang beautifully vocals. on it. That's all I'm Beautiful. saying. Like the the tone of her voice is, is really impressive. So I while I don't deserve the tickets, I mean, I love a lot of her songs. And that is not my number one. You will um, really fall in love with her, I think, if you watch the Homecoming documentary slash music. I love I, what I saw, you know, when she so performed at the Super Bowl. Yeah. In this, the oh, Homecoming was her, it was like a behind the scenes documentary and uh, also the, con- the 
concert from Coachella when she did Coachella a few years ago. And it was the first show she did after giving birth to her twins. And you see what she did to, to train and, yeah. you know, it, it, she is, she is amazing and dedicated. Damn, and I, I needed to clarify that the reason that this is even happening is because Beyonce's tour did not include a Denver stop, but it did include a Pittsburgh stop. So I said, Sarah, I'm going to try to get us tickets and blah, blah, blah. So this was an act of love, people. I don't know what you're mad about. Yeah. Don't be mad. And also, <laughs> I would pass that test. Flying colors. Yeah. Right. No problem. Okay. We multiple, need to... Um, Ivy Park items of clothing. Ivy Park. We need yeah. to wind it down big time. Oh, okay. Wind it down. What the heck did I talk about? Introduce you guys to your new favorite word. Spargasm. Scargasm. Sargasm. Sargasm. Come yeah, on. okay. It's kind of like sarcasm and orgasm combined. None <laughs> yeah. of those things remind me at all of seaweed. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it's like this is an orgasm, but I'm being sarcastic, so it's like yeah. a sargasm, right? Just kidding. Yeah. There's an asteroid coming, so get your bunker ready. But you got like 20 years, so like maybe not. Yeah, like by that point, I mean, for it'll Pete's probably, sake. again, probably will have already sent up Ben Affleck to take care of it. <laughs> Um, Sarah's getting a cat. Yeah. Getting a cat. It's like very exciting. And nostalgia is good for your mental health. Yeah. And you can trigger it. That's good. Okay. So do something. And I hope that after listening to this episode, you'll say, man, these are the good old days. Yes. I think I do say the phrase, this is living a lot. Oh, like, that's good. So maybe that could be my reminder when I think that thought, I should think these are the good old days. Yep. And my friend Jesse and I, we always go, this is the life. We go, what a life. What a life. Yeah. That could be your like, what a life. oh, this is what I'm going to look back on. What a life. Yeah. Okay. It's always fun. I can't thank you guys. I can't thank you folks enough for using our codes being patrons on patreon.com slash brain candy, yes. subscribing, leaving reviews, just following us on social and interacting. All that stuff helps us so not, so much. And we are so thankful. And that's it. And we'll see you on the next one. Episode 700. Whoa. Bye. Bye.